So I want us to go ahead and turn to your neighbor and tell her, I pursue. I pursue. Amen? And we can go ahead and be seated this evening. And I just want to really thank God. Amen? Thank God for my salvation. Amen? I came, I went to the mother church 20 years ago, and I was a lost young girl. My friend had to coerce me to go to church, you know, because her man was in the men's home. Amen? She was like, come with me. I got to go see my man in the home. You know, and little did I know that I was going to hear a life changing testimony of the power of God and hope was going to be injected in my life. And one week after that little visit to the, the homeboy in the home, right, right, one week later, I was going to be saved and transformed by the power of God. And I was going to know God and the power of his resurrection. I was, I was going to be like, I remember I was so dismayed. Like, wow, you know, I went to that club, you know, because I, I, a week after my salvation, right, I tried to go to a club, you know. And I tried to go to the club, and I was like, I felt so out of place. I felt like it was a dark dungeon of hell. And I was like, wow. I never felt like this before. I always, this, was, this was like the place to be. But because the power of God and the Holy Spirit came and invaded my young little life, that hopeless life, that life with no direction and no purpose. And I, he brought me to Victory Outreach International, the best ministry in the entire world that knows how to train up a young woman like that and teach her values and teach her principles and teach her to walk with God. Amen. And that's what I encountered. I don't know about you, but that's what I encountered. I encountered the power of God, a transforming power of God. And tonight, you know, when, it, when we, were, we were studying and just getting ready for tonight, you know, how do we equip women to go global? How do we equip women to take the world for Jesus? And I couldn't help but think about our very own founder's wife. Sister Julie, I mean, I don't think I've thought of her more in the last year than I have in the women's home because I think about her. I think about, I think about her testimony. And one of the things she spoke just recently in the East Coast is she spoke, she spoke about her salvation and she spoke about how she was, she was saved and she knew she was saved. And she was at a, at a gathering in a church and the, the pastor was preaching and the pastor was saying, come to the altar. If you know that you're called, if you know that God's calling you, come to the altar. And imagine Sister Julie did not make that altar call. She didn't make it. She was so insecure. She was such a young, insecure young woman. She knew she loved God, but she didn't know that God could actually call someone. So they make the altar call, and they go, and everybody's there at the altar except Sister Julie, except her. And the preacher, this is a sensitive man in the spirit, he said, there's somebody that needs to be at this altar call. And he called her out, and he made her walk all the way to the front, and he laid his hand upon her, and he said, you know, you are going to do great things for God. God has called you. God has anointed you. You're going to do great things for God. And I just imagine, you know, how, how birthed in her life was a spirit to pursue God. Tell your neighbor, I pursue. I pursue. And she began, she was birthed. That was birthed in us, in her. And tonight we're going to talk about two types of women. Amen. And tonight we're going to we're going to make a decision to be one or the other tonight. That's it. Real simple. And this is a quote from Sister Julie also. She says, there's two types of women in the world. There's a woman that chases God or there's a woman that runs from God. And I thank God that I'm part of a ministry that 
the women of God, they modeled to my young Christian life that you just run to God. Whenever there's a thing in your life, a thing's pressing, if there's a trial, if there's turmoil, you run to God. When there's joy and there's a reason for you to be grateful and thankful for the blessings of God upon your life, you run to God. You run to God in the good seasons. You run to God in the bad seasons. And you got to be one or the other. You're either going to grow the habit of running to God or you're going to grow the habit of running away from God and running to our vices and running to our friends and running to the things that will do nothing for us. But I know in Victory Outreach San Diego, a woman's are rising up that we run to God. We run to God. That woman can also be called a God chaser or a God eraser. Erasing the plans of God from our life, erasing the promises of God. She could also be called a woman that sleeps with the enemy or dines with the king. What kind of woman are we going to choose to be? And there are six attributes of the woman that pursues God. One of, the, one of them is passion. It's a, it's a hunger. It's a desire. A woman that is seeking the face of God has passion. She has a hunger. She has a thirst for God. In the Bible, it says, Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled the Bible says that that woman, that woman, it doesn't say that woman that shows up at church. It doesn't say that woman that drags herself to life group. It doesn't say that woman that can't have no self-control and then just when she walks in the door, she thinks she's a blessing to everyone just because she made it. No, it's saying there's a hunger and a thirsty woman that her soul gets satisfied. It's a hunger. It's a thirst. It's a longing. It's a desire. And that's what the Holy Spirit said this evening is that he's going to inject the spirit of a seeker, a spirit of a woman that says, am I hungry for God? Am I desiring God? Do I want God? Do I long for God? Do I crave God in my life? Do I crave the Holy Spirit to just do something in my life? Because that woman is the one that's going to be satisfied. That woman's the one that's going to be filled. And we also see the attribute of that woman is that she is like Paul. She's like Paul. In Philippians 3.8 it says, but more than that, I count everything as loss compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with him. It's a joy unequaled. For his sake, I have lost everything, and I consider it all garbage. Some versions say dung, so that I may gain Christ. So this man was a man that there were things that he had to let go. There's things that had to be lost for the sake of Christ. But in these words of this man right here, he was able to say, it's okay. Because everything that I lost just to be able to know the immeasurable love of Jesus Christ, the power of Jesus Christ, how be able to see people resurrected by the power of Jesus Christ, it is worth it. I count all that loss as garbage. What meant so much to me at one time, I count it as garbage. I count it as dung. I remember, this is a true story. I was in the car. I had taken the women to a job. And I was in downtown. And I was reading a book that had this portion of scripture in it. And I am not lying, this big dog. This lady is walking this big dog. And um, the you know gets to the corner. The do the dog has to do its thing, and so you know it's a big dog. So you know that dung is is real. That dung is serious, right? And so I watch it. You know you can't help. You watch. I watched it, and then she goes to the thing to to get the paper to throw it away. It's empty. So she she's. 
I'm, I'm thinking, oh, this, this lady's going to leave it. Like, she's, she's done, you know? She's going to leave it. Someone's going to step in that hot mess. It's going to be sad, you know? And I was, like, watching her, like, is she going to do what she's supposed to do, you know? I'm watching her. And um, she does. She walks all the way across the street. She goes to the next thing. It's empty. Then she goes all the way to the other corner. She goes to get it. It's empty. Then she goes into, like, the trash. This lady was serious. She had a, a woman of integrity, amen? So she goes in. She goes into the trash, and she's, like, looking for something. She didn't find anything. So then she took off, and I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, she tried really hard, you know. Hopefully nobody steps in it, you know. But, but she came back. She came back from I don't know where picked up the dog's mess, and it was done. But it was, it was absolutely hilarious that I was reading this scripture when I'm, I'm watching this whole thing. But it just meant, it just, it made so much more sense to me, amen, that there's nothing worth anything else. Is nothing tops it. Nothing's more above knowing Christ. Amen. Nothing is more above. And even when when you're getting to know him in that secret place and that secret passion, nothing can compare to knowing him. And you will you will equate everything else as meaningless, as 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 not quite there as knowing God. Also that woman of that woman is unstoppable. We see in in those in Sarah we see in Sarah that she was a woman that was called with her husband to go. And she was called to go. She had no idea where. How many of you wives or best friends would say, okay, we're going to go. Let's go. Come on, let's go. And then they tell you, well, where are we going to go? And then you say, I don't know. We have no idea where we're going. We have no idea how long it's going to take to get there, we have no idea where we're going to end up. We really, we don't know if the money's going to run out. We really have no clue, but let's go. Does that sound good to you? Right, no, not at all. But Sarah was a woman that she went on this journey with her husband, and she did have some issues on the way. She did have some integrity issues. She did have some issues that needed to be changed within her life. But she was a woman that along the journey, she kept on moving forward in change. She kept on moving forward in change. She was allowed. She doubted God. She doubted it. The Bible says she laughed. And the Lord called her out on it. He told her, you laughed. You laughed. And, and she was a woman that doubted the promises of God, but along the way, amen? And a woman that is thirsty and hungry for God, along the way, there's going to be change. Let me tell you, there is going to be change in our life. Now, the opposite was Lot's wife. Lot's wife, she looked back. She looked back. She was also on a journey. She was also on a journey very similar. And she looked back. She looked back to those comforts. She looked back to those things that were appealing. She looked back to the sin that was appealing. She looked back to the, the comforts of the world. And that look killed her and, dest and destroyed her. You know, but an unstoppable woman like Sarah, an unstoppable woman when we're on that journey, we don't stop. And we know that change has to come along the way. We see in Galatians 5, 7, you were running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? Who has held you back from following the truth? And the next one is resist temptations. By the way, this is an acronym, P-U-R. I didn't say that. So we're on the R. The woman that pursues God, that woman that says, I pursue, she resists, resists temptation. And we see in the Bible, in Genesis, that Eve failed when it came to resisting the temptation of the enemy. Now, we have to remember as women of God that, the, that Satan 
wants to tempt us and rob us and steal and kill and destroy the plan and the purpose of God for our life. And the, the Satan tempted her with doubt, making, making her question God, making her, making her wonder, was that really what God said? He also tempted her with discouragement. He made, he made her look at her problem rather than at her God. She had no problems, this woman. She was in a, in a, in a garden with her God, and her job was to worship and obey. That was it. And she messed it up. Discouragement. You start looking at things you don't have instead of the things that we have. Diversion. Diversion. She was making the wrong things seem attractive so that you, you will want them more than the right things. You know, when we get to that place when wanting that wrong thing at the wrong time diverts us, diverts us. He also dealt with defeat, making you feel like a failure so that you don't try again. And also delay. The enemy will make you put off doing something that is never, and it never gets done. Never gets done. That's Satan's plan. Those are some of his tactics. That doubt, that discouragement, that diversion, that defeat. And Eve wasn't able to conquer temptation. But we see in Joseph's life in Genesis 39. Let's turn there real quick. In Joseph's life, he did quite the opposite. And you see what happened within his spirit when he was tempted he was not fooled. Amen? He was not fooled. In Genesis 39, 7 and 8, it says, And after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Amen? And you see, when this man was tempted, that a spirit of gratefulness brewed out of his heart. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, look where I am. Look where I am. Look where God has brought me. Look what God has done. Look what the responsibility that God has given to me. God brought me here to this place. And how dare I take the one thing that your husband does not allow me to touch, just like the garden. Just like the garden, that tree was that one thing. Don't touch it. Don't take it. Don't taste it. Leave it alone. And Joseph, because of where God had brought him, he said, God has brought me too far. Do you know where I came from? I came from the pit. And God began to raise me up as that man of God, a man that could be responsible over something. And now the one thing that is held back from me, I'm going to fall into it. No, woman. And, and the Bible also says that he fled. Are we going to be those grateful women with a spirit of gratitude when the enemy tries to come in and the enemy tries to seduce us that we're not going to allow it because we say, there's no way I'm going to fall into that temptation. There's no way. And also, that woman who pursues, she knows sacrifice. We also see in the Bible, we see an account of sacrifice. And we see that um, Genesis 3 also, Genesis 3. three ten. When we, and then what we're going to look at is Eve's, her answer. Not what she did. We already know what she did. She, she fell right into the lie. But we're going to look at her answer. And this is when it was time to talk to God about what she had done. And this is in Genesis 3.10. And it says, 
And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I command you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is it that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. And when I read this, I said, wow. I said, where is repentance? What if Adam and Eve would have had the spirit of a repentful man and woman and said, God, God, we sinned against you. God, I sinned against you and you alone. I'm so sorry, God. I'm so sorry that we did this. Did we mess up things forever? Where was it? Where was that spirit of repentance? And let me tell you that that, that curse, it carried over. Because Cain and Abel, the same exact thing happened to them. When Cain came with that whack offering that never thought about, never, you know, he never thought about it. He just brought it like whatever to God and God was not pleased. And the Lord told him, you know what? The devil's at your door. The devil sees this heart. You come to me with this nonsense. And that's what God is. He is asking of the women of Victory Outreach Church that we begin to be those women that we know are sacrificed, that we know that when we come into the house of God, that we come with the worship in our heart, that we come with the prepared heart. Even if we start running in these houses, in the house of God, we're going to say, okay, come with me, sister. You know, let's pray together. Let, let's get my heart right. Let's get my mind right. Because I'm not about to give God a wannabe sacrifice. I'm not about to give God just whatever. I want to give God my best. I want to think about my praise. I want to think about my worship. I want to think about how I pray to him today. I want to think about the offering that I give my God. Because God did not like that offering he didn't like it. And you know what happened? Cain killed his brother. And when God approached him, it was the same spirit. No repentance. There was no repentance in his life. But a woman, a woman that pursues God, there is repentance in our life. We become those humble women that the only place we want to be is humble before the feet of God, submitted to the word of God. I don't know. I can't think of a time when I, don't, I read the word and I'm not humbled. I am not humbled. I am not humbled before the throne of God. I can't think of a time when, you know, the wisdom of the Proverbs doesn't challenge us. And the Psalms of David and his cry to his king and his God, his cry to God doesn't humble me. I can't think of that time. But also that lastly, that woman, you know, with, with repentance in our heart because we're seekers. Our heart is seeking after God. That woman, last but not least, she is engaged. She is engaged in the warfare that God has brought right to her front door. And I want to tell all of us tonight, let's all stand tonight. I want to tell us all tonight, whatever God has brought to your front door he knows what it is, and he knows we can handle it, and he knows we can slay it, and he knows that we have the victory over it because we are those women that pursue. We are those women that pursue. We are those women that pursue the face of God. We're those women that pursue him. We find ourselves humbled before the presence of God. We find ourselves taking inventory and knowing what needs to be repented of. We don't need a leader to tell us because God has told us, Lori, you have to work on this. You have to work on it. You have to work on it. You have to repent from this. Before me, it's dark. It's black. I don't like it. I don't want it in your life. And we're those women that pursue but we're also, let me tell you, that woman that's engaged, 
you know, we're not in defense mode. And let me tell you, women of God, this is the challenge that God told me to put before us. Every single morning, you get off of that bed. Don't get off. Don't get off. Don't do it. Don't let your feet touch the ground. Don't let your feet touch the ground until you cry out to God. Because you're going to say, God, I want to be engaged in this war. I'm not just going to get up and do whatever I have to do and say whatever I have to say and do the religious routine because that religion is not blessed. I'm not satisfied in religion. That's what the Bible says. We're satisfied in hunger. We're satisfied in thirst. We're satisfied when we're like, yes, I want to be at that prayer meeting. Yes, I want to I want to start a prayer meeting. I'm so hungry for God. I'm engaged in this war. Don't let those feet, don't let them, don't let them touch the ground. Don't let them because that ground is the ground that we're taking. We're taking our household. We're taking our workplace. We're taking it and and we're taking our schools. We're taking our church and we have to be engaged women. The other day, someone, it was Jen. She posted a picture, I love boxing, of a MMA, I think her cousin, getting punched, punched in the face. So like her whole face was like this, like all, you know, crooked and she looked like a terrible mess. And and I said, wow, I don't remember what she put, but I, I, I took it. Like, you know, when we aren't hungry for God, and hungry for prayer and hungry for the word of God it's like you're that you're just getting those blows straight to your face every single day by the enemy who hates you it's like you're curling up in a ball just in defense mode just taking it and taking it and taking it and taking it because we're we've lost a hunger for God because we've lost a thirst for God and we don't want to be those women let me tell you we don't want to be those women so the the challenge before us don't let your feet touch and then grab a word of God grab your wow word grab a word like Ephesians 1 or Psalms 103 grab a wow word I tell you this will work women of God this will work and you grab it and you don't let the feet hit and you read it and you read it and you pray it and you're praying it and you're reading it and you're reading it and you're praying it right there you already sucked the enemy in his gut you already sucked him upside this way you already gave him a kick that way we can't get up without throwing blows on the enemy we can't get up unengaged against this enemy we have to be engaged women engaged women we can't let that enemy just you're curled up in a ball no defense no i mean only defense no offense who's gonna win the fight the one who's throwing blows or the one who's curled up in a ball the one throwing blows amen thank you so we gotta be those women we got to be those women. I know I follow Sister Julie. I follow Sister Georgina. When the enemy came in, whatever time he came in, for whatever reason he came in, they began to throw those blows. They began to pray. They began to fast. They began to seek the face of God. And that's who I am. That's who I am. That's the DNA that I come from. And that's the DNA you come from. You are not of those that shrink back and are defeated you are i don't even know you i don't even know you when you we walk in like that no we are those women of victory we are those women that engage against the enemy and tonight tonight we just want to let the lord know tonight oh just humble ourselves before him That's my most favorite place to be. It's just broken on my knees, humbled, humbled, humbled before my God and King, allowing Him, allowing Him to breathe, to breathe, 
to breathe life, to inject his spirit in me. That's where I want to be. And tonight, let's just be those women as we make this altar, altar call tonight. Make an altar call tonight that says, I pursue. Ask God, you know, you can come to the altar tonight and you ask God. We have to remember, we have to remember that a, a hunger for God comes from God. A hunger for God comes for God, from God. So every day we have to be asking God, God, give me more of a hunger. Give me more of a thirst. Let me, let me abandon sleep. Let me abandon, you know, some, my lunch break. Let me abandon whatever I need because I hunger for you. Because I hunger for you. Let's just come before him tonight. Come before him and ask. Let us ask this. Leaders, leaders, we have to be asking God. Sister Julie, when she was <coughs> when she was in LABI, her first dis discipler, she taught her to pray five hours a day, guys. She taught her to pray five hours a day, and I said, God, that's that's why we're at where we're at. Sister Julie was just like me, you know, just like, God, I want to see results. God, I want to see your glory. God, I want to see salvation. God, I want to see transformation. God, I want you to move in these people's lives. And this is what I feel God saying to the leadership. It has to be more prayer, more prayer, more prayer, more prayer, and less of all the busyness, less of all the doing, less of all that, because it's it's that sister Julie, she was birthed in that. She was birthed in that prayer. She said that, that we've come to a place in our ministry where before it was give us souls, God, lest we die. And then it became to a place of just give us souls. And then now we've come to a place where sometimes it's give me, give me. But let's be those leaders that rise up now and say, no, God, no, God, this prayer life, this prayer life. Oh, we're going to begin to seek your face, Lord. We're past that one hour, two hour mark, Lord. We're going to begin to seek you, God, because we want to see results, Lord. Give us souls, God, lest we die. Give us transformed lives, lest we die. Let us see, God, the miraculous. Oh, just.